for a couple of days, and um, it has actually gotten more attention uh, in the right-wing media than it has anywhere else. And it, it's Tucker Carlson, um, exactly. <laughs> but oddly enough, Tucker is, and I, you know, we've got probably too much of, it, of this video. He did a 15-minute monologue on Fox News at 8 p.m. Does he do this show? I thought he and, was, wait, yeah, he's 8, yep. And it is a critique of the market. And so it's sort of fascinating because uh, I'm not sure that it's important at all, uh, but it also could be. I think the fact that the guy is able to articulate these arguments and then latch them on to like white nationalism is, is actually pretty important. Yeah, there's some <laughs> scary precedent for that, uh, incidentally, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. But let's, um, this is the, um, this is the first clip. What he starts is he starts talking about um, Mitt, uh, uh, Mitt Romney's critique, op-ed the other day in uh, the Washington Post, I think it was, of, of Donald Trump, where Mitt Romney takes, I think it was about 500 words, uh, to say that Donald Trump is super rude, but I'm gonna vote for everything that comes down the pipe that he's even remotely close to what he wants. Exactly. And, um, and Tucker takes issue not with his critique of Trump as being rude, essentially, but takes uh, issue with what is basically the Republican agenda. Corporate tax cuts are also popular in Washington, and Romney is strongly on board with those, too. His piece throws a rare compliment to Trump for cutting the corporate rate a year ago. That's not surprising. Romney spent the bulk of his business career at a firm called Bain Capital. Bain Capital all but invented what is now a familiar business strategy. Take over an existing company for a short period of time, cut costs by firing employees, run up the debt, extract the wealth, and move on, sometimes leaving retirees without their earned pensions. Romney became fantastically rich doing this. Meanwhile, a remarkable number of the companies are now bankrupt or extinct. This is the private equity model. A ruling class sees nothing wrong with it. It's how they run the country. Mitt Romney refers to unwavering support for a finance-based economy and an internationalist foreign policy as the mainstream Republican view. And he's right about that. For generations, Republicans have considered it their duty to make the world safe for banking while simultaneously prosecuting ever more foreign wars. Modern Democrats generally support those goals enthusiastically. There are signs, however, that most people do not support this agenda, and not just here in America. In countries around the world, France, Brazil, Sweden, the Philippines, Germany, many others, voters suddenly are backing candidates and ideas that would have been unimaginable just a decade ago. These are not isolated events. What you're watching is entire populations revolting against leaders who refuse to improve their lives. Something like this has been happening in our country for the past three years. Donald Trump wrote a surge of popular discontent all the way to the White House. Does he understand the political revolution that he harnessed? Can he reverse the economic and cultural trends that are destroying America? Those are open questions. But they're less relevant than we think. At some point, Donald Trump will be gone. The rest of us will be gone too. The country will remain. What kind of country will it be then? How do we want our grandchildren to live? 